Welcome to our continued coverage of the UDA party primaries. Now, a deputy president, William Ruto's United Democratic Alliance Party, is today conducting its nomination in some 15,000 polling stations in 36 counties. Now, UDA's National Elections Board has, in the meantime, postponed the party primaries in Bumula, Turkana Central, and Turkana East, respectively. Now, the board chairman, Anthony Mwaura, stated that the polls will be held next Tuesday. The primaries in Mount Elgon and Kakamega will, however, be held in a fr on Friday. Rather, Now, I'm joined here in studio by um, Mr. Uh, Charles Omanga, who's a political analyst, helping us dig into the dynamics of the UDA party primaries, as well as uh, via Zoom, I'm joined by Abel Oye, who is a um, political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this afternoon. And I'll, because we have been talking to you, Mr. Omanga, I'd like to start off with Mr. Um, Abeloye, who's over Zoom. Um, earlier on, we had some, while the UDA party primaries are happening, we also had an update from Nyanza where Kevin Ogutu spoke to us about some election-related uh, election violence, basically violence uh, uh, tagged to the ongoing uh, 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 event. Now, one would be accurate in saying that ODM party primaries are rarely spared off of such incidences. And I'd like to pose this one to you, Abel. Why is it that this always happens? Why the violence? Why the vandalism? Now, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, it's not just uh, ODM, obviously, you can see what's going on with the UDA party primaries. So it's not just ODM where uh, you witness cases of violence or pockets of violence. Uh, it's very common uh, to have uh, bitter contests in popular political parties. For the longest time, it has been ODM, but obviously you can see the kind of outfits uh, the Rift president has uh, come up with. It's very popular in uh, the Rift Valley and uh, um, uh, parts of Mount Kenya as well. And because of that, that, that kind of competition, violence is inevitable. It's not just ODM. And I think UDA has gotten to a point where it's, you know, demonstrated that it's not just ODM. Once a party is popular, you are going to expect very, very heated competition. And that from is inevitable. It's unavoidable. But they have gaps in place to make sure that this violence is contained. The only parties where you can expect peaceful uh, nominations are uh, parties which do not have excitement, parties which do not have uh, serious competition, where you're given, you know, a uh, free ticket and then you're just alone and nobody's bothered by your, you know, your candidates and stuff like that. So, you know, DM and UDA, you, we, we want to, to witness a lot of uh, competition and then in some cases, violence will be witnessed. So all they have to do is to make sure they have uh, measures in place, they have police uh, presence, and there is proper communication from the parties to the members so that there is no confusion, which obviously leads to misunderstanding and subsequent violence. Thank you very much for that uh, view. Now, I'd like to pose this one over to Mr. Omanga. Is it an ODM or UDA thing, or is it a party primaries thing, or is it a matter of there be the stakes being so high and, of course, the popularity of the party or the clout of the party uh, uh, that, that we are focusing on? I think it is uh, about the uh, stakes that are high and, more importantly, also the popularity of the party. In whichever, whichever region that uh, that uh, is happening. More importantly, if you see, because what we have uh, witnessed in Homer Bay is uh, even uh, it is an, uh, an MC election member of uh, County Assembly nomination, and you see now the kind of chaos that have been witnessed. They have made it uh, absolutely impossible yes. for the nomination process to proceed. And you see, they are lamenting and they are even pointing fingers uh, to a particular. Uh, candidate. So it is not only ODM, but uh, what we can uh, confirm is that at least the nature and the level and the impact that the, the nature of the violence have made it impossible for the voting to proceed, that is something that is highly, highly regrettable. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, when stakes are so high, and uh, that is why it is always advisable that whenever parties are, uh, 
uh, approving certain individuals to vie and to present themselves for election or to be nominated. Uh, going forward, I think the party must also look into the character of individual aspirant. Because, you know, at the MCA level, people always make, make presumptions that it is a, a seat that is not for the intellectuals or what. So basically, you realize someone present himself and is being elected because of his past nature, how he has been violent even mm -hmm. in his elementary life. Mm. So at least these are lessons that are learned and uh, we really have to be very, very cautious and parties must be advised. They must have very stringent measures and how to deal with perpetrators of such kind of incidents so that you are either entirely barred from uh, being a member or being a candidate or you are altogether ex expelled from the party. Right. Do you have faith that some of these uh, disciplinary committees can actually make significant moves that will dissuade people from uh, you know, acting in these ways? Based on practice and uh, what we have, because the elections and nominations and this kind of thing is not only happening today. Mm -hmm. We've witnessed in the past and we have always uh, had and have incidences where the disciplinary committees are also biased based on the character of certain persons that are seconded or given mandate to exactly. preside over such a, yeah. such such a, such issues mm. but what is more important is that whoever feel as grieved there are certain stages that whether you are you feel aggrieved that you've not go, gotten justice at the disciplinary level you will still have a recourse to go to the political parties dispute resolute tribunal and even up to the high court so at least the, we, we the our, the country has ensured that you, it doesn't end there where you've been made impossible to participate in the electoral process, but the law also give you a second chance. Okay, Mr. Oyeyo, um, are these disciplinary tribunals, in your view, all bark and no bite? Well, in most cases, they don't uh, accomplish what they intended to, but um, there's always a first time. And uh, I, I think uh, the former prime ministers. Um, demonstrated a lot of uh, caution, a lot of strength, and uh, he has a track record of actually uh, streamlining uh, the parties he leads from NDP, LDP, all the way to ODM. So uh, most of the time, you know, the, the kind of violence that is witnessed in ODM primaries is very limited. And in cases where there are clear, you know, uh, popular candidates, they've always gone ahead to have very peaceful negotiations and free tickets have been given or direct tickets have been given to uh, such popular candidates and i think that kind of stretched in a couple of races around the country the tribunals have to be empowered so that uh, number one they're able to resolve all these disputes and then number two uh they have to they, you know they have to the required strength to instill any kind of uh, disciplinary measures that need to be taken so as to avoid uh, escalation of such cases. But most importantly, uh, you know, the nomination set, set the tone or the pace for the general election. So for us to have what we call voter satisfaction and keep the spirit high so they can participate in the general election, uh, these tribunals have to actually deliver. Uh, and of course, hopefully that, that happens. Now, um, we're going to take a look at uh, a situa another situation that's unfolding on the ground, the UDA party nominations in West Pokot County, why delayed despite...